This is Andy Perwell for ID Boxing. We are here in Liverpool now. I'm joined by trainer Shane McGregor. Shane, another quick, simple night's work for Adam Azim. Just walk me through what was a very limited time in the ring for him tonight. Yeah, unfortunately, there wasn't much time now. Listen, the guys had like five wins, four losses. He, he beat a couple of un beat a couple of unbeaten guys, um, and he'd never been stopped. So we just thought, look, it was a last minute opponent. We had a Ghanaian uh, lad that that couldn't yeah, get over he had a visa issue so um, we had a change of opponent but we thought we were going to get some rounds you know what I mean and, and it, we knew it wasn't going to be a high level skill fight but we thought he would be quite attritional and come to have a go but really annoying like once they feel the power they just don't want to they don't want to be there and it's not just the powers of speed as well um, so it's going to be really hard to get in rounds before we get in tests you know um, but I just think we're going to jump in now and start cracking on and, and pushing on with some, with some decent decent level because I think he's just going to do the same at that level anyway. How difficult is it to match Shane? It's very difficult. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a process. I think, like, if he had gone to Olympics, I would have probably pressed him a little bit sooner. But the fact that, you know, he, um, he didn't go to the Olympics, he didn't have many senior fights, um, you know, it's just like, we needed a few rounds. We want we want a few rounds before. I mean, that was scheduled for ten rounds there, so we, we want a few rounds before we go in to to deeper territory. But at the same time, like no one's really testing in sparring either. I, obviously, there's, there's there's levels to this game and stuff. But like, he is a very 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 talented kid, and like, it's always going to be hard to match him. When you look for somebody who could give him rounds, is there anyone off the top of your head, Shane, who you would like to test him with? Obviously, the name Ryland Charlton is an obvious one which has been mentioned. Do you think we could see that one next? Definitely, I think we could see that next. It's just where we want to go when it comes to headlining Adam and making him a headline reasonably soon because he does draw, uh, especially when he's back in Slough. He draws like really, really well. You saw it in Wembley, he sold 750 tickets. If we can get him to Slough, then we'll start filling out small arenas and then we can start building the star out of him. So. Um, you know, maybe I you know, try and get Ryland Charlton next, and then we'll, you know, we'll try try and go for a few sort of domestic fights before then cracking on into sort of, you know, getting some tough Europeans, and then you know, for, former world champions, and then so on and so forth. And we'll, but you know, it's just um, wanted to box five times a year, and I wanted to be in title fights five times a year. So because I, I really believe that he's gonna, you know. He'll still be he'll still be getting them out of there relatively early. I don't think he's going to get miles on the clock until he starts stepping up into the top top level. Change just a couple of the quick topics to touch on. Obviously, saw Lawrence Coley back in the gym now. What's the latest with him? I don't know. I don't, you have to ask Lawrence Coley. <laughs> That's fair enough. Away from Lawrence, Daniel Dubois. Obviously, you see Dillian White down there. Some rumours surfacing and reports that it might be Daniel and Dillian next. Anything you can update us on? I think so. that's that's a fight. I mean, I think that's a fight that we'd love to get. I, I called it straight. I called for it straight afterwards. Jeremy, I'd love to get that. Um, yeah, I think with um, with Daniel in his career, he hasn't really built his name in the UK yet. You know, he had that he had that one domestic fight against Joe Joyce, and he didn't get the decision. And it was behind closed doors. I think we need a we need a big name. We need a guy like uh, like Dylan. And also that that's a very he's only been beaten by Favetkin, which he overturned. AJ and Fury. That's just an unbelievable resume. He's beaten Joseph Parker. He's a very high caliber fighter. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very tough fight. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but being in that position, being, look, people can try and discredit it. It's a WBA regular world title fight, uh, belt, sorry. So with that, you want, you want recognizable names. You want people to like, help build him his status up. And I think Dylan and, and him is a, is a fantastic fight. I know you're in a rush to shoot, just one final one. After a couple of weeks ago, we saw Usyk Joshua too. Just your reflections on that for me, please, Shane. Very technical fight. I think AJ did a lot better. I think he pressed well. Um, he got in the right positions and he just, he hesitated a little bit. And I think, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. There's loads of hindsight. Uh, hindsight's always gonna be a big thing for him, but a fight in between could have brought that confidence up. And, and that's the problem with being in that position. All eyeballs are on Anthony Joshua. You don't get a chance to, to have, you know, 10 months out, have one or two tune-ups and, you know, you just, you're at a different stage of your career, so you have to go straight in there off a, off a loss and, you know, he did better um, and, and, you know, he targeted the body well, but he just, he, he ran out, he ran out, he had a great ninth round and he, he, he sort of, you know, he didn't press on the 10th, he came out and tried to stick behind the jab, so, but look, Usyk's, Usyk's a 
an amazing fighter. He's just a technical genius. He's unbelievable at constantly making you adjust and, and, and offset. And everyone can say, why didn't you just shoot in and just do this, Andy? Why don't you do that? But really, it's the guy, it's the man in front of you making you, forcing you out of positions all the time. Um, but he did well, and he, you know, it's very high, very high paced. Even though it wasn't an nutritional fight, it was a high paced, high skill fight. And that's mentally and physically exhausting. So, great fight, um, but he didn't get the win. So, yeah, I'm sure he can bounce back. And I'm, I just think he needs to build up slowly. But he's always going to be underneath a magnifying glass and people are always going to scrutinize him. So it's always going to be an uphill battle, especially in this rebuilding stage of his career. So um, mate, you can't take away that he's a very, very, very good fighter. He's a very legitimate fighter. You know, won a world title in his 16th fight, I think it was. So um, yeah, he's, he's done amazing and he's, he's he lost it, regained it, lost it, didn't regain it. Go back to the drawing board and I'm sure he'll come again. Fatherhood around the corner, Shane, how are you feeling? Not yeah. Listen, just not not even not nervous. Just anxious about being up here and 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 it all going off really. So I better better get going. Um, but I don't think you know I don't think the baby's going to come tonight. So maybe early next week. So no, but obviously good luck with all of that. And I'll speak to you soon. I'll speak to you soon, Shane. Thank you for speaking to me in ID box, mate. Appreciate. It.